Good morning and welcome to this episode of Superior Angling. It is mid to late August right now and our plan for today is to do some trolling on Lake Superior. Um, kind of why are we choosing to troll versus jig? You know, jigging is always fun, but kind of the structure and area that we're on right here just kind of sets up nice for a trolling, a trolling pass. You know, there's two to three miles of good shoreline break here, and there's really no obvious jigging spots. You know, when you talk about a jigging spot, you know, you always think of like the size of like a Walmart parking lot, for example, that comes up to 100 feet, surrounded by 800 feet. You know, that's a classic jigging spot. Your shoreline breaks like this. Yes, you can jig them, but it's way more effective to troll, especially when we have water temps and we have those today you know upper upper 50s low 60 water temps and you know that's kind of the peak like right now like mid to late august is kind of the warmest your water is going to get throughout the whole year as we approach early september your water temps are going to start to drop down so when you have water temps 55 to 60 degrees your fish can truly be anywhere you can go up in five ten feet of water and catch some fish you can go out in 120 140 feet and downrig for them you know like there's truly fish everywhere um today we're just going to start out you know trolling here in 70 80 90 100 feet and just kind of see where the fish are we got some planer boards out with snap weights and lead core we got some downriggers down towards bottom just kind of getting a feel for where these fish are again there's so many conditions so many variables out here these fish can truly be anywhere on a day-to-day -day basis but you know when you get upper you know water temps in that 58 59 60 61 you're going to have fish that are very very spread out so you know they can be anywhere they can be suspended they can be right on bottom um, it's just kind of a fun time of year and it just sets up perfectly for a trolling bite especially the type of structure that we're on so we're going to troll around here you know utilize our planer boards to get those out away from the boat run some suspended lines run some down diggers down towards bottom and kind of see what happens but stick with us it should be a good one Double, double. That one had some good head shakes. 40 feet. 40 feet on yours? Yeah. That's to that snap weight, and then you're gonna have about two colors of lead core. This is so much fun, man. <laughs> we trolled for, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes in a little bit deeper water, and there just wasn't much going on, so slid up into 50, 60, 70, and within five minutes, it's a double, but that just goes to show you, like, I saw those water temps, and I could have swore, like, the fish would be 100 to 120, but, that's what's fun about out here is you just never know. You never know what can happen. You can come out here and not catch a fish. You can come out here and have the best day of your life. You know, it's just, I'll grab your snap weight here. There's just so many unknowns and so many variables. You truly never can figure these fish out. They always keep you on your toes. But we got a double going on now and this is a lot of fun. I, uh, I think I'm going to have to cancel my uh, gym membership and just stick to uh, lay trout fishing here right? at Superior. Uh, my arm's kind of burning too. My <laughs> arm's kind of burning too. I guess that's my excuse why I don't go to the gym is because I fish out here. Sounds like it's a good excuse at least. Yeah, this uh, does not feel like a walleye, I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay, we got my board off. I'm just going to put this, I'm just going to loosen my drag a little bit, put that in the rod holder. Oh, that's a big one, bud. Bring them right up the back here. Look at that fish. That's a big lake trout, bud. Look at that. Sick. <laughs> That's a way to start our morning. A big, chunky Lake Superior lake trout for Corey here. Here, you take your fish. I don't want to steal your thunder. Look at that beauty, huh? Fat, chunky. Slimy suckers. What a fish, huh? Wow. Mandalay put up a fun battle, eh? That was fun. That's a beauty. Beauty, I don't know. Eight, nine pounder. Like, you can't go wrong with that. No. There you go. Pink spoon. Big lake trout. You gotta love it. We got one more on here. <laughs> magic. The magic of Lake Superior and the magic of warmer water temps. You know, this year's been so cold and we've struggled so much with such cold water and cold water just congregates fish almost to a point where it's bad. But you get water in that mid to upper 50s, low 60s, it disperses those fish and you know it brings a lot of fish in that live out in, 
you know, five, six, seven hundred feet of water their whole life, it brings them up here into the shallows because it's where all the food is, all the bait is. So, you know, it's just kind of that magic point of the year where you can come out here and catch a bunch of nice trout. You got her? Yeah. Oh, she ain't happy. She not happy, man. <laughs> Lake Trout have no quit. Into the net we go. That's a big one. Cool. Holy cow, is that a spunky nice fish. fish? That's a spunky fish there. Look at that lake trout there. That's a beauty. I don't know, 10 pounder? So much fun. And then now I call that a lean lake trout. You can tell it's just kind of a long, slender fish, longer nose on it, more silver in color. Like that's a fish that just thrives in these water depths of 40 to 100 feet. That's a very nice fish. Let's get that one back. And there's a lot more for us to catch out here. That's a heck of a start to the day. You gotta love it. All right, now those two fish there were both on planer boards and that really tells you something. Um, you know, our down diggers, we had them right towards bottom and they didn't get touched, but our planer boards are suspended more in the water column. So that tells me that these fish are suspended more in the water column. You know, we were in about 70 to 80 feet there when we got hit and I had these boards down about 50 feet. So we're using big N4 size spoons. You know, these are pretty big spoons about the size of, size of your hand there almost. But, you know, just having these big spoons flutter up higher in the water column you know, I think it attracts fish a lot more so than down niggers. You know, I, li I like to run my down niggers close to the bottom and just kind of keep them there. But, you know, I'll target those suspended fish with my planer boards. And again, we're running kind of a combination of lead core and snap weights. So we're running about two colors of lead and then we're attaching a snap weight. And I like to do that because I don't like to run five, six, seven, eight colors of lead just because you have so much line out. You know, if you run two colors of lead and the eight ounce snap weight and put like 50 feet of extra line out with the snap weight, you're gonna get down there, you know, about the same depth as if you let out another 100, 120 feet of lead core line. You know, you can just eliminate a lot of line by using a heavy snap weight in conjunction with your lead core. So again, we're gonna keep our planter board suspended in the water column. It worked great on that trolling pass. I mean, that's that's two fish there pretty, uh, pretty quick. Essentially, you know, they hit at the same exact time. So we're gonna get these set back out there and uh, catch a few more. It's, uh, it's a beautiful day. All right, we got another fish on here. This one feels a little bit better, but we'll see. Once again, it's on a planer board. Um, we're getting a little shallower here. The downriggers seem to be a little more quiet. Yeah, there's a lot of weight on that planer board. So yeah. once we, you know, when we think we have a big, big fish on, we just clear all these lines. So, you know, it's just, that, it gives that fish just a clear path to the boat. Smaller fish, you can skip over your other planer boards, but big fish like to go deep. They like to stay down. So it's nice to clear all the lines and just give that fish a free path to the boat so it's not gonna get tangled with anything else. <laughs> Feeling drag. There Look at that goes. thing to shoot down yeah. here. There we go. There we go. Number huh? three for the morning. That's a nice lake trout. Yeah. Not bad. Oh, I don't know, eight, Good nine, ten pounder. All, yeah. Beautiful. They're just munching those big spoons, man. Yeah. That's cool. Let's take a look at her. All right, there we go. Another nice uh Lean lake trout, beautiful colors on this. Good looking fish. Get this one back in the water and let it swim to see another day and another fight, hopefully. All right, now a little bit about the spoons we're using. This is kind of a bigger size spoon, you know, into that five, six inch range. You know, I like a bigger spoon this time of year. I feel like with those warmer water temps, your fish are a little bit more active. They're more aggressive. You know, they're accustomed to eating herring and whitefish out here that are a couple pounds. So, you know, a big five, six inch spoon is, is nothing for a lot of these fish, even those two, three, four, five pounders. So, you know, a lot of spoons come with a single hook. Some guys swear by them. I'm just a fan of a, a treble. So this is just a VMC treble hook here. We're just gonna swap these out real quick. Um, yeah, I don't know. You talk to some guys, they swear by singles. You talk to others like myself, I swear by trebles. I don't think there's one right thing to use. Just use whatever you have confidence in. So we're just gonna take that single off, 
put this treble hook on here and send that out. Big, bright, obnoxious colors, white backs. I love white backs on spoons, but again, the, the brighter, the more obnoxious, the better. Again, the water out here is so, so clear. You can see down 30, 40 feet. So, you know, you get this bright chartreuse glistening in the sun up there, like it really gets those fish's attention. And these lake trout will rise a long way to hit a bait. So, you know, a big spoon like that, get that running 10, 15 feet above those trout on this planter board, suspended, it's fish on. There's a fish, there's a fish. Pop that rigger out, those are big head shakes too. That feels good. Those are big head shakes. Oof. On the down digger, you gotta love a down digger fish. It's so simple. It's just you and the fish. Yes, planter boards and lead core and snap weights are, are nice because they're effective. They put a ton of fish in the boat. But just having that direct connection between you and the fish off that down digger, you gotta love it. It released, like it should be a good fish. Now I get a lot of questions on what down rigger clips and releases do I use. They're just the standard Scotty clips and I just bury 17 pound braid way back in that clip and I know if it releases, it's gonna be a decent fish. Yeah, this will be a good one. They're all good ones, they're all fun. Seven foot medium St. Croix Icon trolling rod. You want to talk about being a little bit underpowered and having a fun fight like this is the trolling rod for you or the downrigger rod for you it's just <laughs> it's awesome that's a good fish that's a good fish man whoosh look at those head shakes fun fight downrigger fish are just they're just bonus fish right like i count on my planer boards catching the majority of my fish day in and day out but you just look at those downriggers as being your bonus fish that's a nice one. Every fish so far today has been like 10, 15 pounds. Like, good fish. There we go, baby. That's a big trout. That's a big trout. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a good one. That there's a good trout. Easy girl. Easy girl. We got some good hooks into her. Boom. Solid 15 pound fish all day long. You know, touching that 34, 35 inch length with girth, you know, that's a heavy fish. Put up such a fun fight. Awesome fish. Man, my arms are sore, my heart's racing. We we're having a heck of a day out here on Lake Superior, catching some awesome lake trout. I mean, that's, that's so cool, so special. Let's get this one back. There she goes, look at that, swimming right with the boat. So cool. All right, we got a nice fish on here. This one hit a planer board again. Our downriggers were active a little bit before, and now the last couple of hits have come from our, our boards. So this one feels pretty decent. Getting some really big head shakes off of this fish too. So we're gonna give him just a little bit of drag and let him wear out a little bit. Here's our, our high biz leader is coming up, so about another 15 feet and we should get our first look at this one. That's a nice fish. Probably a good 20 pounder. Um, again, on, on the planer boards, outside away from the boat on this gin clear water. Put up a good fight. Beautiful fish. Let's get this one back and let it have another day. That's a big fish too, buddy. Whoa, there we go. You can see the lamprey mark right here. That fish shed a lamprey, you know, in the past six months. It's great to see that it did that and the fish still survived, so. That's pretty cool. We'll get that one back, and there's definitely more for us to catch on the next. There you go. Good little tail slap. 
that there's a fish. Got that click. That feels like a good one. Planer boards have just been so effective for us today, especially in this little bit shallower water that these fish ended up being in. Just using these gator boards to get spoons out away from the boat. You know, 50, 60, 70 feet. This water is so clear down there. Fish can just spook so easily. It pays just to get those boards out away from your boat, let those baits run suspended, and you can definitely put a lot of fish in the boat throughout the course of a day. And right now, you know, everything's super late this year, but now, right now in mid to late August, we finally have some warmer water and everything's starting to come alive. You know, trolling, your fish are suspended. They're up here, there's a lot of bugs. There's a lot of life going on. Like, usually we see this early to mid July, but this year with everything being so late, it's right now in mid to late August. This fish is running. You don't want to come near the boat. I would not either. But whenever you see water temps like 55 to 65, like you can't anticipate those fish are going to be, I mean, that's a good temp for, temp for lake trout. And they're going to be active. They're going to be aggressive. They're going to hit big spoons. I mean, that's kind of the ideal temp range that you want. And it's just crazy to think pretty soon our water's going to start cooling down. September, you know, along the North Shore here we get get those northwest winds that really cool down that water fast so until then we are gonna soak it up and take full advantage of 60 degree water that gets these trout gets these trout going we'll get them into the net there beauty and that's another sign that you know smaller lake trout will just eat those bigger spoons yeah nice five pounder four pounder Beautiful fish, gorgeous markings on it. Awesome, just crunch that N4 size spoon, that big spoon, but hey, when you have water temps like this, these trout will go after them and they will eat them with aggression. Let's get this guy in the live well, and thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.